Welcome to the Chronicles of History. Today we delve into the tragic tale of the RMS Empress of Ireland, a crown jewel in the fleet of the Canadian Pacific Railway Company. This ocean liner was a marvel of early 20th century engineering and luxury. Launched in 1906, the British-built Empress of Ireland was a testament to opulence and efficiency. She boasted four steel decks, twin raking funnels, and two commanding masts, designed to cater to over 1,500 passengers and a crew of around 373. The vessel was a floating palace that offered unmatched comfort. But it wasn't just about luxury. The Empress of Ireland was equipped with state-of-the-art safety features, including watertight compartments and an impressive array of lifeboats, life jackets, and foghorns. These features reflected the ship's commitment to passenger safety, embodying the lessons learned from maritime disasters of the past. Designed for safety and comfort, the Empress of Ireland represented the pinnacle of early 20th century transatlantic travel. On the night of May 28, 1914, the Empress of Ireland set sail from Quebec City for Liverpool. With an impressive roster of 1,477 souls on board, the ship was abuzz with anticipation. Among the passengers were notable figures of the time, Canadian literary icon Stephen Leacock, British suffragette Emmeline Pankhurst, and Salvation Army leader General Bramwell Booth, each added a touch of celebrity to the voyage. But it wasn't just the passenger list that held value. The Empress was also laden with a treasure trove of cargo. Gold, silver bullion, and a collection of priceless artwork filled her holds, adding to the gravity of the journey. This was a routine voyage, a transatlantic passage that the Empress had made many times before, but the combination of distinguished passengers and precious cargo gave this trip a unique air of significance. Yet, as the ship cut through the waters, beneath the starlit sky, there was an undercurrent of obliviousness. Passengers reveled in the opulence of the liner, unaware of the impending disaster. Crew members diligently performed their duties, oblivious to the looming catastrophe. As the Empress of Ireland embarked on its journey, little did the passengers and crew know of the tragedy that awaited them. Fate took a sinister turn when a thick fog descended near the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. Captain Henry Kendall, in command of the Empress of Ireland, responded with every mariner's caution. He slowed the vessel's speed, keeping the foghorn's mournful call echoing through the impenetrable mist at regular intervals. At the same time, the Storstad, a Norwegian collier heavy with coal, loomed ominously in the fog. Captain Thomas Anderson, in charge of the Storstad, chose a different approach. He relied on wireless communication with the Empress, rather than reducing speed or using the foghorn. The two ships, each a ghostly silhouette in the fog, were on a collision course. The Empress, a beacon of luxury and opulence, and the Storstad, a workhorse of industry, were about to intersect in the most tragic of circumstances. Despite the precautions, the fog played the master puppeteer, obscuring sight and distorting sound, leading these two vessels towards a deadly encounter. Oblivious to each other's exact positions, the stage was set for a catastrophic encounter. At 5 minutes to 2 a.m., the Empress of Ireland sighted the Storstad's masthead light, a mere half mile away. The clock was ticking, and the fog-laden air was heavy with impending doom. Captain Kendall, steering the Empress, made a swift decision. He ordered a full stop and a hard port of the helm, aiming to avoid the inevitable collision. Simultaneously, on the Storstad, Captain Anderson misread the Empress's port light as a signal to pass ahead. He made a decision that would prove fatal. He ordered full speed ahead and a hard starboard of the helm, intending to steer clear behind the oncoming liner. The fog of misunderstanding thickened. The two vessels, like two protagonists in a tragic play, were set on a collision course, their paths destined to intersect in the most catastrophic way. The stage was set, the actors unaware of the script fate had written for them. The dreadful moment arrived. The Storstad's bow struck the Empress of Ireland's starboard flank, the impact was colossal, a thunderous metal against metal, sealing the liner's fate. A fatal misjudgment led to the Storstad's bow, striking the Empress of Ireland's starboard flank, sealing the liner's fate. The collision caused a colossal breach in the Empress of Ireland's hull, flooding the lower decks with icy waters. 
in an instant, the ship listed dangerously to starboard. The shock of the impact hurled passengers and crew from their quarters, pitching them into a nightmarish realm of chaos and confusion. As cold water surged through the ship, the lights flickered and died, plunging the corridors into darkness. Panicked cries echoed through the ship as people scrambled to find their loved ones, their way to the deck, their path to survival. The Empress of Ireland's state-of-the-art safety measures proved tragically inadequate in the face of such a calamity. The ship's severe list rendered half the lifeboats useless, trapped against the hull. The crew faced a daunting task, launching the remaining lifeboats in total darkness amidst rising panic and in the limited time they had before the ship sank. Despite their valiant efforts, the lifeboats could only save a fraction of those on board. Within 14 minutes, the Empress of Ireland disappeared beneath the waves, taking with her over a thousand lives. In the early hours of May 29, 1914, the Empress of Ireland, once a symbol of opulence and safety, became a watery grave for over a thousand souls.